Hello, hello, hello. God bless you. God keep you. Well, I was thinking. I was sitting in the house and I became frustrated sitting here. It just seems sometimes like life is passing me by. Like everybody is having fun except me. Like somebody has something to do except me. Like everybody's life has a purpose, has a meaning except mine. Mm. I just uh, jumped in the car and I just took a ride and the lady that I had uh, talked to yesterday, you know, the lady, I, I, I became concerned about her. I wondered if she was still walking around in the neighborhood, so I drove back over that way after I cleaned my car out. And uh, I didn't see her, so I'm praying to God that maybe she's laying down somewhere getting some rest. But as I was uh, as I was driving around, I seen people, families, and uh, I, I assume some people coupled up on porches and stuff like that. And it just I don't know. It just got to me. And then for a moment, I start thinking like, what if all the things that I'm doing you know, is my living in vain? You know, that's an old song. And then the Clark sisters revised it. Is my living in, in vain? And you wonder, is my life in vain? Am I really doing God's will? Am I, am I on point? And as I was driving, I'm trying not to think that because I know that's a defeating thought. I, uh... I had to come back and then I thought about, you know, I added up the years, you know, from the first time God was, I felt God was speaking to me and I got like 15 years and I was like, oh wow, it's not really that long. Because I was like, well, Lord, it's been a long time because you know how you want to moan to God and maybe if I whine and, and complain, maybe God will rush it. You know, he'll rush the vision because I was like, oh my God, it's been forever. You know, is it ever going to come about? I mean, this it's been a long time. I've been through some ups. I've been through some downs. But this is ugly right here. This is a big one. You know, and uh, I don't know. I just, just, sitting, just sitting and driving and just kept making me think, you know, uh, when the kids go back to school, I always get out my grandbabies, you know. I always wanted to have an event with them so they could say that they did something when all the other kids are talking. But then I, with myself as well, you know, with summers, oh, what did you do? I didn't do much, you know. I, I did some things, but I didn't do the things that I wanted to do. I didn't, I didn't really help the people I wanted to help. It's like I'm still singing the same old songs, just in a different venue or a different year. Um... It's better, but then it's not. I don't know. It's, you know, I'm not where I used to be, but I'm not where I want to be. I'm not really sad, but I'm not really happy. <laughs> I'm definitely not hungry. I thank God for that. Even though I'm saying those things, I have to say, you know, I'm blessed. You know, have a roof over my head, food, clothes, you know, so thank God for that. Although today, I was helping my daughter go look for a car, and I got out of the car, and I looked like I looked like a shipwreck, <laughs> like I jumped off of a ship. I, it's like, you know, your life, I don't know, I can't say my life, but I don't know if it's just a test. I just feel like I'm going down in my clothes, my wardrobe, just things start going down too. I had some shoes, the heels was breaking on the shoes, you know, true, I did get them from the Goodwill. Well, one per yeah, both of I ended up getting really good. Well, then the soul came out for one person. I'm like, oh, my God, what is this? You know, it just seems like, you know, I I, I was talking to the lady, like I said the other day. I call her a friend. And, you know, she's like, talk to me. And I'm like, you know, if I sat down and actually told a person everything that's going on in my life, not things that I made, not all things that I brought on myself. Just sit down and just tell you the thing. 
she wouldn't believe it. You know, because I had spoken to her before about something. It was like, are you sure? You know, well, you know, did you bring, yeah, you know, but okay, yeah, I didn't bring that on myself. I didn't bring this on myself, you know, but I have to deal with it, you know, but I don't know. Sometimes, like I said, I don't like to complain and you try to walk through things, but you can't try to walk, walk and try to tell somebody how to live when your life is messed up and jacked up yourself. That I don't believe in. If you've never been through anything, then don't come talking to me and try to tell me what, what, uh, how to go through something and this is what you need to do. It reminds me in the Bible. Yes, I'm going to go back to the... <laughs> and that's the only reason I'm here about the Bible. But I'm going to go back to the Bible. That's why Job is my favorite story. And sometimes I was like, did I bring this on me? It's always been my favorite story because my older cousin Tony, he would always tell it. And I love people telling me stories because I can, I can identify with it. And I feel like I'm there. You know, I, I love stories and mysteries and thrillers. And to me, Job is like the best story in the Bible. Because he, he goes through everything and through all the, I mean, all the adversity that he goes through, he continues to worship God. Yeah, he gets the, why did you make, you know, why did you bring me here? You know, why was I born? And all these things like that, you know. And he grieved and he wiped his sores and ashes and all these type of things. But still, yeah, although you slay me, yeah, well, I love you. I mean, somebody rich. Having everything and then going down to nothing, still able to worship God. I mean, that's awesome. That's awesome. I mean, that's why I love him because it's like it's the best testimony in there, you know. And um, like I said, I I love the story. I love the way he dealt with ad adversity. I love the way he responded to his friends when they came around him and they was trying to tell him that he did something wrong. And that's why a lot of times, that's, that's why I learned my lesson about sharing everything in my life with people. Because it reminded me of Job. He's sitting there and the man's sore, sores is all over his body. You know, the man has lost his children. His wife lost a man. But she needed, <laughs> hello, <laughs> it's like divorce. <laughs> but here she is talking about curse, curse the Lord. When, you know, you weren't worried about him cussing the Lord when you was eating off the table. And probably, I'm quite sure she was buying her little fancy little dresses, her silk and her wool and all her little things. So, but now all of a sudden, you know, you're going to tell him to cuss the Lord. But, yeah, his friends, how they, they was telling him that he had did something wrong. They wasn't for him. They didn't support him. They didn't have his back. And I always think about that. You know, you be you have to be careful who you share your your trials and your tribulations with because for one thing quite often you will find <laughs> you will find they not really your friend you'll find they have arterial motives to why they're around you and again it reminds me you know um td jakes talk about people that come in your life and there's a lot of people, Tyler Perry, a lot of people I've heard talk about people come in your life, you know. But some people come to be positive, you know what I'm saying. And some people come to get what they say. Some people come to add. Some people come to take. T.D. Jakes talks about your confidant and this or that. And then Tyler Perry talks about uh, the tree and some people getting on a branch and they not really there for you and they, they'll fall off a break or something. Hello. But what I find is, you know, uh, just be with the people that are for you and stay away from the people that are not. People talk about love your enemies. Yeah, some people you love, but I always remember in the Bible. I don't know a whole lot about the Bible, but a lot of it that I read and I do remember. And even though some people I've heard, sure, but I've read, he said, uh, go to the people. Jesus said, go to the people, tell them, tell them about me, whatever, go in their house. And if they invite you in, go knock on the door. If they invite you in, then go ahead. But if they don't invite you in, whatever, wipe your feet and keep going. And that's just the way I feel about life. You know, if you for me, you for me. If you're against me, I'm gone. I'm not gonna set there. Some people stay around their enemies too long, stay in trouble too long, and that's what I get. I become afraid of is that you know 
I, am I missing something? I don't want to stay too long trying to figure out, you know, is this God's will or isn't it God's will? I don't want to stay too long. A time is, oh, time is too valuable to be wasted. And, and I'm at the end of time. I'm not at the beginning anymore. I don't have any time to waste. So that's why, I, that's why I'm talking and I'm saying what I'm saying. And I'm not going to be one of those people. God forbid, I don't ever want to be one of those people. You know, I don't want to fake it. I don't want to be a fake. I don't I don't want to be a pretender. And I don't want to put a mask on in front of the world and, and say, Oh, well, yeah, you know, God loves me. I know it's going to be all right. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I know God got me. Yeah, I'm going to get to the other side. Yeah, that's nothing right here. This is nothing. Oh, I feel good. I feel great. Now, I'm not that person. <laughs> there are some people out here that you go be around them. I'm not one of them. You know, I, I think that's what's wrong. <clears throat> I'm drinking uh, green Kool-Aid. <laughs> Lemon lime Kool-Aid. That's one thing. I've never liked. I've never liked to be around um, pastors, church people that's always talking about, oh God, it's so good. I don't like to be around people like that. Oh, everything's rosy, everything's peachy. You too happy for me. If you too happy for me, it scares me because something's wrong. Something's wrong with you. <laughs> something's wrong. I mean, I'm not saying that every day can't be happy and joyous and, and you have peace and you have harmony. Yeah, okay. But every time I'm around you and everything's going so right and, and yeah, I, yeah. I was talking to my daughter today about that. You know, the guy was talking about the car. It does this. We'll fix it. I got this machine. I got that machine. I'm just looking at him. And I, when I, I had the opportunity, I pulled my daughter to the side. I said, Thing. I said, if it sounds too good to be true, they tell you, uh-uh. And so that's the way I live my life, too. Yeah, uh, I've been uh, uh, practicing my words. What was the word I learned? Uh, oh, I can't think of the word. I just learned that word. But it means that uh, cynic. Thank you, Jesus. i uh, being a cynic. I hate being cynical. But hey, I'm practicing my words here, yeah, bringing up my vocabulary. I I got time. I like to use my time wisely. Um, yeah, I hate being a cynic, but yes, you know, you just I I'm just literary about that. But like I said, for me, I like being open and honest, cause then later on, I don't have to have anybody say, "Well, darn, look at her. she was acting out like she was happy on top of the world." Now look at her, she's over her crying. You know what I'm saying? Did you see her? She was crying. You know, she's boohooing. Oh, I can't believe it's her. Now look at her. Now nah, you, uh, nah, you don't have to worry about that coming my way. I'm going to tell you how I feel. Like I said, this is not no picnic. <laughs> they say this is not a picnic. You know, sitting back and not really knowing, walking by faith and not by sight. Turning your will over to God. Turning your will, your money, your thoughts. Your independence, your everything, your total life over to God and letting Him do what He want to do. Just stand, standing, standing and stepping back out of the way. And just praying that the outcome is going to be satisfactory because. I've prayed before and I've asked for things like I wanted a black car. I wanted a black SUV. And God gave me one. I wanted black on the inside, black on the outside. You know, I learned to detail it. But I did. I got a little uh, little black car, a little black truck. You know, I, I got a little black truck. Kept it for about four years. It was the longest car. The car I had the longest, so... Like I said, uh, I try to be specific about what I'm asking God for. And like I said, He knows my heart. You know, although He knows my heart, He knows that He has to clean me. He has to cleanse me, purge me, which I ask Him, cleanse me, purge me. 
I'm at the altar. I'm at your feet. Wash me. I love when David prayed. He said, wash me. Hit them. Clean me. Whatever's in me that shouldn't be, take it out. You know, I want to be... I don't even want to be like Jesus. I want Je I want to be what Jesus want me to be. I used to pray that, and I was like, "Oh, that's silly. I'm a woman." He said, "No, I don't want to. I don't want to be you, cause there's only one you. I want to be what you want me to be. I want to do what you want me to do, and I'm not gonna sit here, stand, lay down, prostrate, whatever. I'm not going to lie about. It's a struggle. It is a struggle." It is very difficult. Believe me, the flesh, the man, mm. and like I said, there's just an invisible rope, and, and you just you just gotta grab it, and you gotta hold on. You gotta keep seeing that. Just stay focused on 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 the vision. That's what I'm doing. I I just have to keep on, keep on staying focused on the. On the vision, you know, although people around me don't understand, thank you crazy talking about a church you, did you go to theology? did you go to theology school? did you go to seminary uh uh my friend though she did ask me she said, "Well, how is it you know uh, since you did videos what's what what is it? I don't get any views on my YouTube channel." And so she got quiet. And so I'm like, think, being around, sharing your dream and your vision with another person and taking, having the guts to do it and then have a person not validate you. Not validate you. Feel like they turned their back on you. Feel like they were ridiculing you or they were laughing at you. But they're supposed to be your friend. That hurts. That hurts. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, I believe she means well. I'm not angry. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to push her away. But just that little silence. You know what I'm talking about. you talking to somebody about something, and that little silence comes. And you know what that means. They're not agreeing with you. You know. And, uh, they, not, they don't understand that you've already ridiculed yourself. You've already questioned yourself on that. You I have already wanted to quit. What you're trying to get is encouragement. And what I find is so weird on this journey is having people to encourage you. You know, sometimes I have to, well, most of the time I have to seek it out. Unless I'm on uh, YouTube or something like that. If I didn't have YouTube and if I didn't go to church, I don't have anybody that would step back. Nobody in my family knows that I know of that really see my videos anyway. So it's because I have it. They come up on a, uh, my 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 Facebook page and stuff like that. But you know, I don't have people around me to encourage me. Not physically around. It's like I said, YouTube or something like that. Other than that, I don't have anybody that can speak into my life that knows me. And that's not a great place to be. It's uncomfortable. Thank you, Jesus. It's not that. It's just that it's not comfortable. But at the same time, what I do love, and I can't say that gives me comfort and gives me a little joy, is I think about Elijah and Moses. I think about Paul and being in their company. I'm not calling myself a prophet or a preacher. She kept asking me that to my friend. Are you a preacher? I'm like, no, I don't like saying preacher. I said, I'm an orator. Because <laughs> uh, I don't know. People want to hurry up and put a name. I don't have one right now. You know, all I know is that I am who I am. And I'm just, like I said, I, I know, I understand Elijah, you know. Calling down all this fire and stuff, and you're killing all these, all these uh, priests, and then you turn around, and somebody say something to you. She said, boo, and he was gone. You know, I understand how it is to be in the wilderness and then to be fed. You know, I understand. I mean, with Moses, when he had to leave the palace, 
and then he had to go and be walking behind sheep and sheep uh, doo doo and stuff like that. Ah, oh, wow, you know, mm. awesome, 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 awesome. Mm. Jesus to have everybody be your friend, and then when you die. And you hung up on the cross and you look down and you don't see your friends. Wow. That's very scary. To walk around and to serve God your father. Who helped you perform miracles and all these type of things and your friends seen and witnessed it. And all of a sudden... When they come to lock you up, everybody leave you. <laughs> oh, wow. You know. And then Jesus hung on the cross and he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. I ain't lying. You know I would. <laughs> oh, woo, I, that's the only thing I hate about watching that part. I be thinking like, yeah, okay, they'll know what they do. Oh, Lord, you know I can't be up there. I'll be like, what? Like, ah, oh, for real? <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, you used to be my homie. Now you act like you don't know me. Ah, uh, nah, for real. I was like that. It's like that. Oh, wow. Well. But that's life. When I was young, there used to be a um, gospel station. Uh, WL it was WLOU. And it was a pastor. Oh, I can't think of his name. He was a popular pastor. But uh, uh, he was preaching a sermon, and he said, um, "Ah, yeah." He said, "I uh, uh, we don't mind going up with you. We'll go up with you. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah, we on top." He said, "Yeah," but when you're going down, they just standing on you. It's just like the crab in the bucket. You know, every time you're trying to get out, the crab will pull the other one down. You know, everybody will go up with you, but don't nobody want to go down with you. When you're down, they'll just help push you down. That's why I thank God I've never had a whole lot of friends except when I was real young. Real young. I had a lot of friends. As I got older, I mainly associated and hung around with my family. But I slowed up our friends because they always wanted to argue. They always wanted to gossip, and then each one want to tell me about the other one, and all of this and that. She said this, he said that, all of this little stuff like that, and it got it, it. It just was chaos. Friendship just became a burden. So, like I said, God bless you, God keep you. I was just sharing what was on my mind, and like I said, I just asked God to have me. I didn't forget where I'm at. Yeah, the song was, was Had Me by Bruce Parham. You know, had me. Sometimes you just got to ask God to hide you from yourself. Because in and of myself, I would take and do something crazy and miss my blessing. I mess up my blessing. And those are the things I don't want to do. And that's what's difficult about telling somebody where you're at. They don't understand that you don't want to do, you don't want to step out of God's will and take things into your own hand and miss your blessing. I don't, I don't. So, whatever comes, I'm doing the best I can to hang in there. But life for me hasn't been no crystal star. But my will is to do His will. God is good all the time. God bless you and keep you. Bye-bye.